I firmly believe that Lamar Jackson is arguably the best quarterback outside of Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, and Josh Allen. From a strictly talent perspective, it's debatable that he's even higher than that. I think that's the key that's getting lost during this contract dispute. So today I want to break it down like a refined essay with a thesis, claim, counterargument, and rebuttal. It's reported that Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are $100 million apart from agreeing to terms on a long-term deal. While I can understand that maybe $230 million fully guaranteed is a bit high, it seems that this is where the market seems to be heading, and I'm surprised that the Ravens can't get close at all. So today I'm going to act as that middle piece that's doing the fine-tuning and breaking down Lamar Jackson's worth for everybody to see. Even if you're a team who has to give up the draft capital to go out and get Lamar, I think it's worth it. Now let's start with Take It To The Bank. This section of players are what is going to make our money what we're talking about when we're in this contract negotiation. Now I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't see a single throw on film that Lamar Jackson truly couldn't make. The first play up, we have a cover three look by the Jacksonville Jaguars. And usually we want to attack the seams here, and the route concept breaks the seam more open than ever. The outside receiver is going to run a quick stop, which leads to the outside corner getting flat footed and leaving Mark Andrews wide open in the seam before the corner or safety can tighten down that window. And right here we have a cover three look in the red zone. Typically, what we want to do is clear out that middle of the field safety and hit that backside post given the route concept of Baltimore. However, the Jaguars cover the concept well and all initial reads are covered. But Lamar Jackson, being an elite quarterback, scrambles to improvise and makes a play by throwing a dime. Now understand, this is an extremely tough catch and it ends up being an incompletion. But this is top tier playmaking. He gave his receiver a chance. And sometimes when we talk about big time throws, it's not always going to be a completion. But this here is special. Going over to the next play, we have yet another route concept that runs dead until Lamar Jackson puts on his cape and makes something out of nothing. I just don't know too many quarterbacks who are saying, hey coach, let me run outside the pocket and throw across my body 15 yards down the field. But Lamar Jackson is doing that. Now this right here is another throw that I believe is big time thinking and just being a playmaker. When we look at RPOs, they're typically a game of numbers. We want more players right here than you have right here. And the outside receiver is going to run a slant while the fullback runs a wheel and the tight end runs a flat. The corner bites down with the run, leaving the outside linebacker in a two-on-one situation. Lamar Jackson having the mindset of going the big time throws he sees that wheel as soon as he spots the two-on-one. Looks as if he's not sure, so I'm letting the ball fly. And the only reason I believe this is an incompletion is because Patrick Ricard isn't extremely familiar to, you know, having ball tracking skills down the field, catching a ball like this in stride. But I think this is a pass that should be caught in stride, maybe even to the house. Right here, we got a cover six look from Carolina, and this is absolute teaching tape. He looks vertical the entire time up until he breaks it inside and completely fools the safety finding a sweet spot in the zone. But Lamar Jackson, he already knows that. So another play just showcasing timing right here. When looking at quarterbacks, my favorite types of throws are the tight window throws and throws outside the number that keep your receiver in bounds. Let's keep raising that value with throws like this one right here. And right here, it literally doesn't get any more big time. Like, seriously, for anyone who ever questioned the arm strength of Lamar Jackson, I just want you to watch this play. I don't even want to break it down. Just let it fly. And if we're talking about understanding where to put a ball versus man coverage while also knowing where the help is coming from, Lamar has it. Right here, we see Mark Andrews immediately win versus the press at the line of scrimmage, and Lamar is putting that ball in the tightest of windows. The safety can never get there if he was driving a car on the football field. <laughs> now, next play, it's just more of the same. We got cover one. Okay, I got it, coach. Let me find my slant on the backside away from the trips formation because I know the safety's helping to that trip side. I can do all of the above, coach. Now, the final play that we're taking to the bank an absolute strike against cover two. On this play, he could have hit the vertical or the post, and you could honestly say he took the harder route, but if you're gonna throw a dime to the sideline like this, does it even matter? 
Now, before I dive into the not so electrical plays from Lamar Jackson, I want to cover the middle ground. And these are the plays that hurt the stat sheet, but are equivalent balance of both good and bad. So what we have right here is what looks like it could be a simple catch by James Prochet, but it turns out to be a drop. And if somebody were to say that Lamar led this ball too far outside, or he could have put the ball on him on his numbers, I wouldn't be against that, which is the entire purpose of this middle ground. But that's part of my argument for Lamar Jackson is that if he had more solidified weapons outside of likely Andrews and Duvernay, his production would have been insane. I think Nelson Aguilar is solid, but there's better guys out there. And these very slight misses could be big time completions with better receivers. And right here, we have an interception by Bravion Roy. This makes the middle ground because I don't think anyone is accounting for a 6'1", 330-pound man to jump at the line of scrimmage and get a pick, but right here he did. It's just kind of one of those awkward plays, and I got to put it out there because we see interceptions by Lamar, and some of those are tip passes, some of those are things like this, so we got to cover it to understand where are the turnovers coming from. Now this is a cover one blitz and the play speaks for itself. Lamar is forced into a tough red zone throw off of his back foot after the pressure hits home immediately. Can we blame him for this? I think both yes and no. Again, there's a handful of quarterbacks who would make this throw and a handful of receivers who would go get it anyway. But I think this is a tough throw, pressure got home, what do you really want him to do in a situation like this? Now, this is another play where I think Lamar is thinking one thing and the attendant target is thinking another. Right here, I think Isaiah likely gets open versus man coverage, but because the defensive back is playing underneath, I think Lamar puts this ball over the top, which I think is the right decision in this situation. And there's also a ton of grass in front of likely. So he doesn't get vertical. It's kind of a tough one. I would like to think that this might look different with Mark Andrews, but both of these tight ends are exceptional. Just the play didn't go as planned. Now it gets ugly. I'm not here to make Lamar Jackson feel good about himself or to overhype and boost Lamar. But if you play good, then typically you're gonna have a good film breakdown. However, let's talk about some of the players where he dropped the bag. We're talking about attacking that outside corner and cover three, and right here, they use their tight splits to their advantage, forcing the corner to bite down on Mark Andrews for barely even a split second. But that hair of time is all Devin DuVernay needed to get past them. This is by every indication what we describe as a money play, but Lamar overshoots him. Gotta hit on this play every single time. Now this is a play that could have made middle grounds, but if Lamar is gonna be that guy, I want this pass completed. Simple cover to look, and DuVernay does his job of selling the corner out to find the soft spot between the flat and the deep zone. But Lamar throws it out of bounds. Now understand, this is not a completely easy throw by any account, but it's one that I think he can make. He did the hard part of making the read, so I just want to see him trust that arm and fit that ball right there. He's made harder throws. He could have made this one. Right here, the Giants drop eight in the red zone. The coverage is exceptional. My only problem with this play is that while Andrew looks open here at first glance, there's a safety right underneath that route. Ready to make a play, ends up tipping the pass and almost causing the turnover. So it's just a fatal error in the red zone. And although it didn't turn all the way ugly, it could have. On this play, the Ravens are going against Tampa 2, and I honestly can't tell what Lamar is thinking on this play. Maybe it's really just a throwaway pass, but he also could have hit likely dead in the middle of the zone for a first down to move the chains. I feel that it's rare to see these things from Lamar, but it's all worth showing because he's done it before. And the last two plays that I have, they're pretty similar in instances that sometimes when Lamar was forced off platform, his accuracy waned just a bit. But I can say that for a lot of quarterbacks. And I can also say he's better than a lot of quarterbacks at throwing after moving off the platform. So overall, I think Lamar deserves a contract at least somewhere near the range of what he wants. To me, his only weaknesses are accuracy from time to time and sometimes trying to go too far to make that big play. Other than 2021, his interceptions haven't been too concerning. While he's not a perfect player, he's by far better than many quarterbacks in the league and a guy who I consider elite. So let me know, what do you think?